Cyprus is an island surrounded by the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. It's politically and ethnically divided between the mainly Greek-speaking Republic of Cyprus in the south and the Republic of North Cyprus, recognized only by Turkey. Cyprus is a beautiful island home to about one million people. It's also a popular tourist destination, but some people come to stay longer, like Laura, a young teacher from Scandinavia. People usually come here for a holiday for a week or two, and then we came here and got a nice house, and we knew that we were going to be here for a year. So it was a very good experience. The heat, it was about 40 degrees, 35 degrees Celsius. It was very hot. It was, uh, it was like a holiday paradise, you could say. But there are other expatriate women for whom the reality on Cyprus is a very different one. When I go to the cabaret at 9 o'clock, he takes my telephone. Anyone anyway, buy a passport, I don't have the night on the days. No, no paper, I don't have nothing. I go with men outside. Really, um, people is drunk sometimes. So I'm so afraid. Really, many times I say, I don't have nothing. Maybe somebody kill me and they throw me for the bed or something. My mother, she waits me and she don't know I'm dead. It's uh, estimated that uh, if uh, some lady, she has been locked in the brothel, so she has been raped 6,000 times. It's, um, it's very difficult to, to put these ladies um, in one category. Most of the women, they are between 20 and 30. I met Sunday school teachers, pharmacists, and people that uh, were in the medical profession. Um, I, some of these women were better educated than me. Martin Dolan is someone who knows the reality these women face because he and his team have been working with them for many years. Every weekend we were in contact with between 70 to 100 women in Nicosia, particularly staying in one hotel that was very close to where I was living. At one time, God opened a door for me to, um, and my team to, to reach out into, it wasn't a, a cabaret, it was a brothel. It was purely a place of prostitution, where a group of 10 to 15 women from Thailand were brought into Cyprus specifically to be prostitutes. They were living in some very run-down apartments in the centre of town. They were not allowed out of the building. They were kept, they slept, they lived, they had sex with the men in the, in the rooms that they lived. And the only breath of fresh air they got was to go out on a very small balcony overlooking the street. And um, that was their lives while they were in Cyprus. They were literally like slaves. Or if my dream is that I gonna establishing a nice cafeteria, so then I There's only a small a handful of people on Cyprus who are helping victims of human trafficking. One of them is Pia Rendis, a citizen of Finland. Our first contact with them is that uh, when uh, police make some kind of raids to the brothels or nightclubs, so they will send ladies to the shelter, which is run by Cyprus government. So while the ladies are in the shelter, we go twice a week and we take ladies out. So I took them to the nice places. We went to the polling and uh, riding stable and uh, we went to the park, swimming halls and that kind of places. I just wanted to make them feel that they can be part of the normal life. Neither Pia nor Martin had ever imagined that they would one day find themselves confronting a problem like human trafficking. It was uh, over six years ago when I was praying at my home in Finland and uh, 
God just spoke me really clearly that uh, I have to work with prostitutes. And I was at no way <laughs> that it's the last, last thing what I want to do. And it was as if God downloaded how he felt about these women. And I felt the most incredible pain, the most incredible love, mixed with a kind of grief, like God was grieving over his lost daughters. So what is the world of a prostitute like? Who are these women who sell themselves in the brothels, nightclubs, and cabarets? Or find themselves listed like food and drinks on a menu for sale to male customers in all-inclusive brothels? We began to discover that there were women that were choosing what they were doing. There were women who uh, saw this as an, as an option to, to make some money and um, also many single mothers um, with young children back at home in Russia and Eastern European countries. But also there were a large number of women that were not choosing to do this, that were coerced, that were forced, that were duped. That was the trap in which this woman from North Africa found herself ensnared. I bring the clothes normal, the Cyprus, because really, uh, for me, I don't have uh, the, the, how I say, experience for life because always I work for house so I chose normal clothes she said what is this clothes I said, what's happening it's normal clothes what do you want she said no you go work for Carberry I said no please I don't want you to change me work I can't work for your office or your house or something else like this she said no I cry I told her please she said no They call it the, the island of, uh, of love because the, according to the Greek legend, the, the love goddess Aphrodite was born here from the foam or the f f waves of the sea. So it's really like a, it's a scenery of, for, for lovely things to happen. Like Laura, most people living on or visiting Cyprus are unaware of the dark underside of this island paradise. In the worst years, uh, there has come over 6,000 ladies over to Porto during one year. And it was the time when there was still allowed those artist visas, uh, which basically allowed girls to come work uh, like a dancer or entertainment person into nightclubs. And uh, nobody actually know the real numbers at the moment. Basically, it's really easy to come across the Porto from North Cyprus to South Cyprus. These women are like unwilling slaves, held captive in the dark world of human trafficking. You can't move, you can't go to the store or you go shopping alone, nothing. You stay home, always men with you. If you go to shopping, you must take, he take you, you don't go alone. There are also places where women are locked in 24 hours a day. Martin and his team have personally witnessed this reality as well. I was able to, to build a relationship with the man who had trafficked them into Cyprus. He knew that I was a Christian and um, he gave us permission to come into his brothel. What we would do, we would prepare gifts, baskets with chocolates, with flowers, with um, handwritten cards with messages of love and hope to them. As we began to give them something, because so much had been taken from them, they just began to weep and they began to break down because they could sense that we were genuine, that we weren't there to take anything, we weren't there to coerce them to become Christians. We were just there as messengers of a God of love. The main problem actually if we speak to victims of trafficking. So why they, in the first place, get trafficked? So it was because they don't have any work and they desperately wanted to get some work and that's why they were so easy 
target to the traffickers. And now they are here and police has rescued them. They are in exactly the same situation. They are again without work. Here in the Room of Hope we can give some work training so that they will receive some kind of skills what they are actually needing in real work life. Our target is that we can start to sell those products abroad so that we can actually pay real salary for the ladies in the long run. But there's a cultural problem that perpetuates the sex trade on Cyprus. Here in Cyprus, I believe that um, in the culture, it has become acceptable for men to have sex with prostitutes. Um, I believe that it's become acceptable um, both to the women and to the men. Because I've, over the years I've met many women, many Cypriot women as well, that have excused the behavior of their sons, of their husbands, and saying, as long as they come home to me, it's okay. Men will be men, boys will be boys. Not only the men, but also the women need to wake up to the fact that this is very damaging for, for families, very damaging for the women who are being forced into prostitution or who have even chosen prostitution. During her stay on Cyprus, Laura began to realize that there are many foreign women living on the island who are not free to come and go as they please, but are being held against their will as a source of income for someone else. They're poor and then want to have a job and then they're promised to have a job in the cafe or something and then they're put in the middle of this and they can't get out. And, and about the whole system, how the society kind of doesn't do much about it and even the police can be involved, there's mafia behind. So seeing the small people's desperate cry of help and then the whole system that goes around it and it's very hard to stop. So that was very shocking for me. Some of the more fortunate victims managed to escape in anti-trafficking police raids on the brothels where they are being held. But their lives will never return to normal. Many times those ladies who are already living alone, they are depressed, they are still scared, they don't have any, any purpose for their life, they are still uh, getting nightmares. They are still, if they're walking on the street, they are still looking to the back, is somebody following me? One girl I remember um, who told me that she had been a Sunday school teacher in her country, I think she was Romanian, she said to me that she was psychologically damaged and she felt that uh, she would never be the same. Um, this was common for, for women to tell us that they felt very wounded and very damaged by what they were experiencing. I think now I'm, I'm okay now, but <laughs> I don't know what, what I tell you because you see, he sell people like he sell the, 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 the food or something like that. It's, nobody care for girl. People he touch me, he do what he like. If I do it with him what he like, he call the boss and the boss he shout. I have two university degrees myself, but actually those degrees, they don't have, have actually helped me so much in this work. It's more 
uh, life experience. I have a background that I have been sexually abused. So I can, I can understand the ladies, I can understand what they actually going through. And that's why I think it's, it's so important that if they actually want to heal, we have to get them to understand that they are precious things in the eyes of God. These tragic stories are like a dark secret that's never shared because there are no visible scars that would reveal the emotional pain that these victims of human trafficking have suffered. We have been able to, to get to know how Bia is working here. And for example, if you, for, for an outsider, if you go there to the center and see what they're doing there, it seems that they're just ordinary lady enjoying the time, having time to, together. So you can't really see from the outside what's been going on with them. For example, with these ladies I, I see every day, it's, uh, they look, look like a normal. You can't necessarily say that, okay, this lady is victim of human trafficking. Uh, uh, but when you actually see them face to face, you can, you can see it from the small things. If you, if you have an eye contact with them, you can see the shame on their eyes. If somebody makes sexual assault against you, so it goes really deep inside of you. So the shame and guilt you start to feel, it's really holistic. It's like a cover which comes over you and the shame you feel, it's, it's holistic shame. So if you go to you walk on the street, you are thinking, oh my God, what people are thinking about me. If you go to a restaurant, oh my God, how I look, what he, you know, it's a small things what affects, you know, to your whole life. I sometimes compare it that, uh, you know, for example, when you go to visiting to somebody's home, uh, it's not so intimate than if that other person is coming actually to stay in your house, because it's like you show everything. And the sex between man and woman, it's basically similar. Woman is always giving everything. She's always giving something out of herself. And finally, when you have slept with thousands of men, there is only walls left. This is for sure you don't like. Maybe you, because, maybe you say no because you don't have money, but maybe you lose something for your body. One factor that helps the sex business to thrive is the deluge of sexual imagery that engulfs us every day. It's everywhere you look. Sex is in the media, from a young age, as we grow up, it's in all areas of society, increasing and increasing and increasing. I think it's too close for the people. I think our society is so full of sex. If you walk on the street, all the advertising, all the things, everything are selling by using sex. I see pornography very much going hand in hand with prostitution and pornography being a step towards engaging in prostitution. People that they don't usually see, they can say that this is outside of my life, I don't have anything to do with this. But they don't realize that actually if you are just uh, watching pornography, you are already part of the problem. Because uh, every time you press the button on your computer, you basically pay to somebody else to rape a woman. Because pornography is so pervasive worldwide, Pia decided to write a book about these issues. I wanted to say in my book that before you can even do something, you have to be aware that you are not part of the problem. Because quite many people are. Because so many men and also so many women are addicted to the porn. So when somebody come and say, don't look porn, so they feel that it's attack towards them. I think that um, there is a, a genuine need both in men and women for intimacy and, and sexual activity is a part of that 
and, and that has been God-given. That is a gift from God. But definitely in this generation, that gift is being twisted, that gift is being destroyed, and um, it's actually destroying people's lives. In human trafficking, the victim is not seen as a person, but just a commodity, a product to be used. This is not wrong, this is sick. This is people sick. Because he don't like people, he don't like, he don't look people how is people. He look only money. I am 10,000 or 100 or something like this, no more. Because he take, he leave me, I go with men outside the night. Why he didn't tell me, take your telephone with you, something happened, call me, never. Laura is touched by hearing the stories of trafficked women. She feels there's a strong similarity between consuming clothes that are made in foreign sweatshops and pornography or sex. So as long as I consume and I don't know how sad stories are behind the shirts and the coats and the scarves that I'm wearing, as long as I'm not aware of the pain, I don't care. The ones who consume porn or even use the ladies or the so-called services that they have, that if they just feel the urge or they have a need, sexual need that they really need, uh, need to be filled, they just do it and they might even not know that the ladies are not always there for, for volunteers, but they're forced to. But as long as the ladies are just a product, they are just something to use. They are like material and they, they, there's a need and it's not in their hearts. It doesn't stop anyone. Pornography, sexual images, images of women, um, what is supposed to be normal activity is exposed to, to men in this generation again and again and again. Basically a big lie has covered all the sexual in industry. They are just selling fantasy all the time and it's so easy to sell to the people. The horror of various kinds of human trafficking is the grim reality of life for about 27 million people on our planet. Cyprus is located at the crossroads of continents. It has a very weak border with North Cyprus, which unlike the South, doesn't belong to the European Union, making Cyprus a significant gateway for human trafficking in Europe. The number of victims is increasing because there's a common perception of prostitution being just another occupation or profession. It is not work. It is work if I clean house 24 and 24 hours. Perfect for me. This is not work. Europa is not everything. What is the dream? Sometimes you find better your, your country. What makes the issue even more complex is that these enslaved, trafficked women are forced to behave like regular prostitutes, flirting and acting like they're willingly engaged in this kind of activity. A young woman who became ensnared in this sphere of human trafficking and involuntary prostitution offers a blunt opinion about the kind of men who use these women. You're assholes. That's all what I can. You're the, you don't have heart. Or if you do, then it's from the stone. Because you don't feel how the other person feel. If you, I wish that, that guy who used the girls is in the girl's place, so they feel and see how we feel. If the man is doing like this, they don't have heart. They are, sorry, they are shits. Um, I think my message to, to men is wake up. 
wake up. Please wake up, men. Because um, uh, it is so easy for us as men to access pornographic images via the internet or to look at things on television or to, to secretly fantasize in our minds. But at the end of the day, men, you're only damaging yourselves. And also, I want you to know that those women are real women, real people made in the image of God with real names, real homes, real mothers, real fathers. They are somebody's daughters and they are not doing that. They are not taking their clothes off for your benefit. They are not doing it because it is enjoyable for them. On many occasions, those women that you are looking at are not doing this from their free will and they would rather be doing something worthwhile with their lives because they are worth more than this. Don't need a band-aid from a bullet hole. Don't need a brand name from a suit of car. Oh, lend me a hand, stay with me in the cold. Oh, show me the plan, the way back to the beautiful. Don't need an AK or an A-bomb. I need you with me here now.